start the recording and we'd like to turn it over to Yogesh. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we are still waiting a few more folks to join in, but uh, we, will, uh, we will get started uh, and hopefully others uh, will join. Uh, and I am actually, after saying hi, I am going to turn off the video just to uh, save on the, on the bandwidth and, and have uh, others uh, join because uh, if I keep it on, uh, it, will, it will be difficult for us to continue. So let me turn off the video and uh, let's move on. So uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, welcome back uh, to the Cody International Institute. Uh, whether uh, you physically came here uh, to attend a course or you attended a course um, that we offer overseas, uh, welcome uh, once again. Uh, just to begin with, can I ask a question? Um, how many of you actually came to Cody? Can you raise your hand? Okay, but I see others like Rajesh and, and Carmel, Jacinta, they also came but they are not raising their hands. So maybe there is something with the technology. I just wanted to make uh, make a guess how many of you have attended our overseas program, but I don't see, based on my memory, I don't see anyone from overseas courses yet. Anyway, welcome back. Um, hopefully, uh, some of these pictures will, uh, will remind you of, of your time here. Uh, and I'm, I'm so delighted that uh, uh, you are able to join today, uh, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that more uh, more will join uh, soon. So, <clears throat> before we actually uh, go into the substance of the of the webinar today and and, uh, um, uh, and and the purpose, let me just quickly give you sort of a preamble. Uh, I see some of you uh, attended the course uh, just last month. Uh, and uh, some of you attended the course uh, two, three, four, uh, maybe more years back because we, uh, Farooq and I started to teach this course since uh, 2009, so it's been, it's been nine years. Uh, so just to uh, refresh you on the journey uh, that uh, this particular certificate course has taken at Cody, so I just wanted to highlight uh, some, of the, some of the data and, and, and basically to refresh your memory and, and then we can actually talk about um, some of the some of the real questions for the webinar today so since 2009 uh, we have offered this course on campus uh, at san francis xavier university at the Cody international institute 16 times and as you know uh, we have taken this course overseas as well and we offer it every year uh, with our partner uh, wise in ethiopia uh, since 2012, we have been doing it every single year, and we offer it at uh, the University of Pretoria, uh, the Ghana Institute of Business Science, Gibbs, uh, in South Africa. So those uh, off-campus co off off-campus courses we have offered nine times, and then we have also offered some customized uh, courses for our uh, partners like the Aga Khan uh, Development Network, uh, Care, uh, and also uh, <coughs> some of our partners. Uh, in, in the Caribbean, uh, the, the Haitian uh, Center for uh, Leadership. So six of those we have offered um, uh, <coughs> as, as customized livelihood and market courses. So in all, uh, we have offered this course uh, 31 times. And uh, the total number of graduates uh, that have taken this course uh, is uh, 614, um, uh, 337 male and 225 female. But uh, this number actually uh, is a bit higher, uh, or, or it, we, we, the total number of graduates are actually close to 800 because this number doesn't include uh, the participants who were in our diploma program uh, who have attended this course from 2009 until uh, 2014. So the number is, is, is quite higher than 614, so around 800. Uh, number of countries uh, that uh, uh, that our graduates are uh, right now uh, is uh, 48. Again, this number doesn't include the diploma participants. So 
uh, it's, it's uh, definitely more than 50 countries where um, the participants are, are located uh, as we speak. So where these countries are, it's actually all across, uh, all across the uh, globe. Uh, and because we offer off-campus uh, courses in Africa, uh, the number is quite high there. And in general, uh, quite a number of countries are represented uh, um, from Africa. But we have had um, um, many participants from uh, South Asia, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal. Um, and also, uh, we have had people from uh, South America. Um, I actually offered a course in, in Spanish. Uh, and so in, in that, uh, many participants from South America came, but also uh, otherwise, uh, many courses, um, <coughs> and we had people from South America, and also many from uh, the Caribbean nation. So it's a fairly uh, good uh, network of uh, livelihoods and markets graduates across the globe. And, and if, I, if I were to see the, the top uh, five countries where we have most number of graduates, so they are Ethiopia, India, uh, South Africa, Haiti, Ghana. And, and, and one of the reasons is because we offer overseas um, courses, we have offered courses in those countries. But even otherwise, um, it's, it's uh, fairly well uh, spread uh, in terms of the network of uh, people who have taken this course. Now, which sectors or which type of organizations uh, the participants um, have come from? And again, it's a fairly uh, good mix. Um, I mean, we have had many uh, come from uh, the non-profit sector, uh, the non-governmental organizations, both local, uh, national, as well as international uh, non-governmental organizations. So they are they are a big, uh, a big group. But we also have had people uh, come from uh, bilateral uh, organizations uh, like uh, Global Affairs Canada, USAID. We had people from uh, uh, ZIZ, uh, from Zika. Uh, we have had donors send their uh, participants here from Ford, from Gates, from MasterCard. Uh, and also, uh, uh, many of the corporations have sent uh, their corporate social uh, responsibility, CSI, but also their core staff to our courses. We had people um, uh, from producer organizations, uh, presidents of the cooperatives, uh, producer companies come and attend courses. We have had folks from social movements, uh, uh, women-led organization, so it's a fairly uh, good mix of uh, uh, representation in terms of different sectors uh, that the participants have come from. And that actually, uh, most of you who have, who have attended this course, that actually makes the, the discussions and the class and the experience rich. So um, it's been great that we have had that cross-section of uh, organizations come and attend this, uh, this course. Now, just to refresh, especially for uh, some of the folks who, uh, who are joining uh, after four or five years, and I see at least one or two of them, uh, and to just, to just to go through what, uh, what we, uh, we were doing in the classroom uh, when you attended the course. So just a, a quick uh, refresher. So as, as you would know, we, we always start with the context, looking at the big picture, big picture context under which uh, we work and, and we, we try to support the livelihoods of, uh, uh, of people. Uh, so we basically start with the looking at the, the, the globalization and, and the global context and, and the growing and converging uh, global economy and the impact of that uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic growth, but also the consequences of it in terms of inequality and the impact on the on the climate. So we we start with that big picture, uh, understanding the world we we live in, and then we, um, as 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 you all know, uh, some of you had come with uh, very little experience uh, working on, on on livelihoods, and some of you had 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 uh, very solid experience. So, but what we did, we started with. Uh, a, a common understanding of the basic terminologies and, and concepts. And that's how we, we always uh, begin the course, uh, looking at uh, uh, formal in, uh, economy, informal economy, different uh, uh, levels of enterprises, uh, what's the difference between livelihoods uh, and, and what's, the, what's community development. So uh, basically going into different key terminologies and concepts as, as we like.
So I hear a lot of background noise. So somebody might, must have had their uh, microphone uh, on. If you can just uh, uh, switch off your microphone, that would be great. Yes, and then we went into looking at different uh, approaches, frameworks. Um, uh, many of you will recall the three waves of, uh, uh, of development that we discussed, and we situated the market-based development within that broader uh, framework of, uh, or, or the, the history of international development. And then uh, we devoted a substantial time looking at uh, the market-led approaches or uh, the, the, the value chain and market systems approaches. We discussed a lot of tools of how to select a value chain, how to do value chain analysis, how to uh, develop, how to identify opportunities, constraints, develop programs, and also uh, how you can actually implement a market development program, how you can implement a value chain program, looking at examples from, uh, from Bangladesh, looking at example uh, of the <clears throat> honey value chain, the coffee value chain. So looking at really practical examples, how you can actually do this on the ground. And as you would remember, uh, we devoted a lot of time uh, on uh, looking at social enterprises uh, as because as the ecosystem is evolving, we are hearing more and more uh, about uh, uh, social enterprises uh, trying to fill the, fill the gap in terms of uh, uh, the market failure. Uh, and we, we looked at the the, the framework uh, of 4i, uh, the innovation, the investment, incentives, and, and impact. So I hope some of you will, will recall that. And, um, and at, at the end, I think uh, you will all remember, because you all worked very hard for it, is the, is the assignment. And, and we all looked into different value chains uh, across the globe and how they look, uh, how the markets look, and, and different strategies of connecting producers to market. So this was this is just a, a quick uh, refresher uh, of uh, what we went through as as, as uh, different groups over the, over the uh, last nine years. Now, now I actually want to hear from you, um, uh, and I want to hear from you, and uh, hopefully each one of you on three basic questions. Okay. So you came, uh, you attended this course, you interacted uh, with the facilitators, but you also uh, interacted with uh, with your group. Um, hopefully, you learned, uh, you gained some new knowledge, you you gained some new skills, and 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 more importantly, you develop a network of uh, of peers. So for you individually, at at the individual, personal, and professional level, uh, what has changed for you? Uh, in terms of change in uh, confidence, maybe change in thinking, the way you analyze, the way you look at uh, things differently. So what exactly has changed for you? So what I would, I would uh, like uh, for each one of you to just uh, share your personal reflection. Then we can have a, a quick discussion and then I will go to the second question. Does that sound okay? That sounds great, Yogesh. Um, so we'll notice you'll notice that uh, we have one participant with their hand raised. First. So if you'd like to use your mic, please raise your hand, and uh, we'll just start off with uh, with V and um, turn on your mic. And when you're done, then Shazia from Pakistan will be next. So you'll notice that in the attendance list, it shows who's next in the queue. Okay, and Wendy, just before they, before Faye begins, there's few folks who are still uh, sending me messages on, uh, on WhatsApp. At least six of them. Okay. But they are not able. To, they, are, they are not able to log in. So I, I don't know what we can do. Yeah, it's it's bandwidth on their end. I'm afraid. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. Faye, what over what to you. What we'll be also doing. Okay, hello. Everybody. What folks? What we'll also be doing for the folks who uh, cannot attend is that we'll be continuing this discussion uh, in Cody Connects um, it, as a discussion forum. So those folks who can't get in can listen to the recording and also contribute in the discussion forum. Go ahead. So. Okay, can I go ahead because it's, I, I seem not to hear anything anymore. I don't know if anybody can hear me. Yes, Faye, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, go ahead, Faye. Okay, so the question was what has changed? Um, for me, before I came to Cody, 
I had no idea what um, value chain analysis meant and programming and all that. Uh, and just before I came, we had had um, uh, a producer, uh, a manufacturing organization come up to my organization to say we should help them with their backwards integration in cassava value chain. And so I only attended that first meeting and I came over to Cody. By the time we were done and I came back in, I knew how to direct the program and how to steer the program. And when I first came back, it looked like, oh, so what's the new thing you've brought? What's that new thing? And um, my CEO kept on asking, okay, you claim you want to do um, value chain analysis. What did you score? And so I had to keep following up with um, the school. And when my transcript came back, I scored, uh, I scored really high. And once I sent that in, um, whatever I say now is the way we have to go on the project. <laughs> <laughs> and just hope we can steer the project. So whilst we're, and that, that's what has actually, it's made um, my organization appreciate the fact that I've gone out there, I've brought in some more understanding and knowledge that could be applicable to mm. our stakeholders. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Faye. Uh, Shazia? Shazia, maybe. Yeah, I see that your microphone is on, but we're not hearing you. Can you uh, try speaking again? Hmm, not sure what's happening there, Yogesh. Um, maybe we can move on to Surendra. Hi, Surendra. So nice to see you. Let's, Yogesh. Uh, Hi, Yogesh. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you fine. Yes, Yogesh. <coughs> yeah, so value chain uh, uh, was very important topic for us. And we really gained so much from this experience because See, one important thing is many times while working, we forget that we are not part of the value chain. We are working alongside the value chain, especially in case of NGOs. But uh, <clears throat> before coming here, we always we always feel that we are part of the value chain. And, you know, after the project ending or after the exit of the uh, NGO from the project, so there is a gap which was, which is, you know, very difficult to fill. If NGO thinks or we people think that uh, we are part of the value chain, so this was, this was the first very important lesson for me. So now, <clears throat> after coming back from Cody, whenever we work on value chain, I mean we are working on value chains. I think around 12 value chains we have worked afterwards, and so that thing I kept always in mind that let's not put ourselves into the value chain if we are not as an NGO. So that is the learning which I am adopting. Second thing is the kind of systematic knowledge and kind of, you know, depth in the value chain we learn. So I think now, uh, let me tell you with some, uh, this thing that now uh, in our own programs, even actually government has put mandatory to like before sanctioning any project, let you create a value chain of these commodities. And then the project implementation comes. So now the value chain become an uh, integral part of any uh, DPR uh, project preparation. So uh, I think after uh, coming from Cody, we are we are more you know we are more knowledgeable about value chain. And we are now adopting because we are now quite we think that we are uh, uh, confident and capable to make the correct value chain. So these are the two things uh, I would like to share here. That definitely this part of the session was very very important for us, and we are also implementing in our day to day uh, business. Thank you, thank you. And I think that was that was one key learning because uh, many of the participants in your class in many other classes uh, were coming from traditionally uh, a community development background where you go and, and uh, work with the farmers, uh, focus on production. And at times we are so immersed in that work that we, we tend to, to forget that 
it's the farmers and entrepreneurs who are uh, the real actors in the value chain and we are facilitators and supporters so that's a very important point uh, uh, surendra that you made uh, i see shazia's hand again so let's try uh, shazia uh, can you speak now hmm it's still not working I see Queen as well. Queen, you want to say something? Oh yeah, I uh, have been connected from inception. I uh, I want to take a question. Uh, what have changed at the institution? You get honestly accepted by the institution has significantly exposed nice opportunity in concept and where they are coming. That can engage life best with them. As my say in forty, I the wonderful one that uh, I now possess a greater capacity to realize challenges. You know, that is picking a problem and uh, then find the gap and uh, provide uh, the uh, uh, intervention needed while promoting a uh, uh, development through diversity. Just, in fact, I've been able to, I've been able to upgrade strategies. Queen, queen. queen, queen, can I can I interrupt you for a minute because you are breaking up? Uh, can you switch, <coughs> turn off your video and just uh, just speak? Okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, thank you. So I was saying that uh, I've been able to crystallize challenges. You know, that's picking problems, identifying the gaps, and providing the intervention where needed you know while promoting development through diversity and social justice you know upgrading strategies and then um, finding positive deviations are some of the imagined lessons i got from uh, my stay in uh, uh, coding uh, besides i'm more familiar with them um, key technologies now like globalization value chain analysis uh, 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 microfinance and uh, uh, things like uh, uh, beekeeping you know and the, the, the related challenges uh, uh, it, it's not. Uh, it, it, it's it's so quantifiable. You know, they, 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 it has a tremendous change in me. The way I think, the way I reason, the way ideas are now flushing in to my uh, uh, face, and uh, be ready poised for action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, you know, I have been following some of the discussion that is happening uh, on WhatsApp and. Uh, there was an interesting uh, sort of conversation that that happened between uh, Rashida and uh, Faye, I think, when uh, they were saying, Rashida, I think, was saying that uh, after gaining so much uh, knowledge, uh, some at times she feels constrained uh, because of the current system, because of the organizational sort of uh, policies and procedures and at times she feels uh, as if she should start her own initiative or own organization so maybe rashida if you have a microphone would you like to share some of that hi rashida if you just click once on the microphone icon okay i've done hello Great, go ahead. Okay. okay, I did find that when I came back from Cody, um, I think maybe, I don't know, I, I know quite a number of people that I was in Cody with felt um, the same way. I was dissatisfied with the system. I came back and I looked at things different. I looked at what it would take to change some of the things that were on ground. I looked at my level in the organization and I realized that um, um, I did have the buy-in. I don't have the buy-in of people who are at the top. They don't have the knowledge that I have. They don't have the exposure also that I have. And it's difficult if you are a middle level um, officer in a very large organization and you don't have the powers to change what is around you. And I came to the conclusion that what you do have the power to change is you. If you cannot make the changes that you want within the organization that you are in, then maybe it's time for you to look outside and find where you can begin to actually make 
that change, the change that you so willed. Every time I have an assignment now, I look at the assignment, I look at I look at it, I see that there are big, there are ways that we can improve the processes that we have here. But unfortunately, I do not have the powers to implement some of those things. And um, like every government organization, to change the processes is not a middle level um, 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 something you can do at the middle cadre. It's something that has to come from the top. There's a lot of push from the bottom, but you know it's easier when those who are at the top can buy in. So what actually I'm trying to do right now is I've been talking with um, the director of training to see how we can get top um, people who are at the higher hem of affairs in the organization to attend some of these courses so that when you are at the lower level, you are at the middle level and you have this training and you have people at the top, then it's easier to make the organizational changes that you want. Great, great. And and on that, that one, I think uh, I would just um, use this platform to uh, to tell you all that especially the ones who are uh, who want to start their own uh, sort of enterprise or, or social enterprise uh, in, in our case we are actually uh, starting and I, I told some of you uh, in the class that we are actually starting a new course on uh, social uh, enterprise uh, from next year so uh, in next uh, May we will have this course called uh, uh, social enterprise for local inclusive economies uh, and in that, the focus actually is going to be um, identifying the gap, how you start, how you actually come up with the idea, that whole uh, cycle of prototyping, piloting, and scale, uh, and how do you get uh, funding for uh, a <coughs> social enterprise, how you develop a, a, a business plan uh, that is like really implementable. So those are the things we are going to actually focus on. and. Uh, uh, so some of you who really want to get into uh, the, the nitty gritties of, of, of that, what, what Rashida just said that, okay, uh, I mean, uh, we have to do something on our own. And, and, and if you are, you have that uh, entrepreneurship uh, sort of uh, zeal in you, then that might be something that, uh, that you would like to consider. And um, I think uh, uh, Wendy just uh, uh, put the link for that course. So if, if you are, uh, it would be actually great if uh, some of you who have already attended the, the basic course on livelihoods and markets, you come with that background and if you want to or, or are interested in social enterprise, that would be a great course to attend as well. I, I think we are, Farooq and I are, are in the process of developing it and it will be ready uh, next year uh, in, in May. Okay, we have James now who has his hands up. James, can you go ahead, please? So, James, in the bottom right hand, uh, bottom of the screen underneath the PowerPoint, you'll notice a microphone icon. Just click it once to turn it on and then begin to speak. No. And let's try. Let's try Pakistan. <laughs> one more time, Sazia. Let's try one more time. Still can't hear you, Sazia. But go ahead, James. James. Yeah, but I'm here. This is Philip. Oh, Philip, you want to share something? Yes. Okay, Philip. Okay, James, hold on. Let let Philip uh, speak. Okay, go ahead, Philip. Okay, good. Very good morning to all of you. Um, livelihoods and market. Uh, can I? Is it clear? Yes. Go go ahead. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Um, what has changed for me? at the individual level or the personal level in terms of change in thinking and analysis. Um, personally, before I joined the course, my mindset has always been, if we are talking about livelihoods improvement, then we are talk just talking about, okay, once I'm able to reduce poverty and increase income of the farmers that I deal with, 
then I've been able to tackle the issue of uh, kind of like I have improved their livelihoods. That was my mindset. But when I joined Cody Livelihoods and Markets, my kind of like thinking school widened. I just I discovered that, you know, in, in, we have to tackle the issue of uh, 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 capital improvement around the natural, the physical, the financial, the social, and then the human aspect. If you are able to deal with all these areas, automatically you have improved the livelihoods of the farmers we are dealing with. And so right after that, thinking any intervention that I want to propose to address the issue of productivity and reducing poverty of the smallholder farmers, I try to look at it from this five broad uh, um, perspective which we were taught um, the, the livelihood pentagon i try to look at it from there mm -hmm. same way when i'm doing analysis I, I i try to do the analysis from that perspective and so i must say that the program has really really helped improved my analysis skill now i do critical analysis because i look at it from a broad perspective not a narrow perspective and the interventions that i propose now are quite wonderful and my peers and my colleagues can agree with me that indeed something remarkable has happened to me after I attended Cody. Um, I also discovered something. I, I knew of local content participation. If you are designing a program, how to involve the locals into it. But I didn't know how serious it was until I got to Cody. And through the experience that I've had there, I mean, I... It has been my, my talk, always talking about local content participation, how to get the locals we are designing the interventions for to fully participate in it so that they can own it. And once they own it, when the program or the project pulls out, sustainability is assured. Yeah. And um, the value chain analysis. I, now my colleagues call me value chain uh, analyst. Because everything we are talking about, I want to get to the board and then put a pen and paper down, try to sketch something so that we will be able to address the gaps that are in the value chain of any crop that we are dealing with, any issue that we are dealing with. And so in terms of what has changed, um, I would just say that so much has changed after uh, participating in the program. Um, concerning the second one, it says that have you shared your knowledge gain? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I have. I, mm -hmm. Whilst the program was even ongoing, if, if my course mate will notice, I've been sending WhatsApp messages and text messages. Yeah, I was sending it to them whilst the program was even ongoing because by then we were trying to unlock a puzzle within a grant that we're given. And we're given, um, initially, Agri's approach has always been if it is a uh, 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 certified seeds that farmers will need to plant and they are not getting it okay so let's give some breeding institution grant to produce more seeds for farmers if it is a, a, a market they don't need then let's give grant to maybe a, a, a process or something so that he can buy from the smallholder farmers and all these are standalone grants but now the approach is kind of like a consortium can we find partners and that was in the presentation that I presented. I have even shared it with them. Can we find partners that they can work together? And it has to be market-led approach. So if all these partners are working together, automatically other farmers can join in. Other players like aggregators can join in. Other processes can join in. And because it is market-led, automatically when the project pulls out, the system will be running. And so it is an approach that is ongoing now they, they are looking at the what I presented at Cody was the maize value chain, but now we are looking at maize and soya value chain. We are looking at the rice value chain as well. So it is something that is ongoing there now. Um, what else do I have to say? My presentation, I have also shared it. Uh, I, I belong to this research gate something where you we share journals and presentation i've shared it with them i have received some comment i've also shared it uh, at academia and i have mm -hmm. received some comments from them i mean positive comment well others of you know because it's a, it's a place where you post journal articles and stuff you definitely get criticism 
someone was saying that, but this thing has been there a long time. Is it now you are discovering it? Well, I discovered it at Cody. Great. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's uh, so maybe I have more questions as well. Uh, so let's hear. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that, Philip. Uh, there are more questions. I think that uh, uh, relate to the organization at the, at the partnership. So just hold on to that, okay? Okay. Uh, James, just try uh, to speak now. So, uh, Wendy, I think we still have issues with James. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening with James. I see that his microphone is there and that it's active, but it doesn't seem to uh, it doesn't seem to be picking it up. Um, so, I, we do have a response. Uh, Shazi from Pakistan has put in a chat. Um, can you read, read it out? Sure thing. At the individual level, I feel more confident after acquiring the knowledge acquired in the Livelihood and Markets course. I'm able to do analysis with in-depth knowledge, tools, application and principles. My understanding towards several aspects like value chain analysis, social enterprise, private sector engagements, financial inclusiveness, etc. In result of my learnings, I have developed new programs at the community level for the community level, which is in process of approval. This can only be happened after acquiring new learnings and tools and frameworks. Great. Yeah, and, and, and maybe I think uh, because you're not able to speak, Shazia, uh, it will be good to hear uh, because uh, your work directly applies to my last question around changes at the community level. So maybe you can uh, type a little bit more about what exactly the, the project is that you're trying to do and then we'll read it out uh, for the third question. Uh, now let me actually move on um, <clears throat> uh, because we don't have any, uh, I mean Johnny was also there, he wanted to speak. Uh, Johnny, are you there? I don't see Johnny now. Johnny from Haiti. Johnny popped off, but uh, we have uh, Faye and we also have Jacinta. Okay. So James is not, James, maybe you should type. Uh, and uh, Faye, Faye one, uh, once again. Faye, over to you. She can't hear me. Uh, hmm. I think there's some something wrong with your um, uh, speaker, Faye. All right. I think it at this point in time. Let me. Uh, can you talk, Faye? Um. No, she's not. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, Oh, 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 I see a microphone popped up with Faye. Yeah. No, uh, we can't hear you, Faye. Faye, if you're on... Um, and we have Jacintia and James. Okay, Jacinta. Jacinta, can you speak? No. So folks that are ha who are having difficulty speaking, if you could type your responses into the chat, that would be lovely. Oh, I hear someone. I would like to say something in the next uh, two minutes. Oh, because you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, Philip, then you yeah. complete and then, yeah, yeah okay. okay. One important thing is also this. Uh, 
just after Kodi, uh, we already have this enterprise we have registered back home in Ghana. But just after Kodi, myself and my team, we have given it a new shape. Actually, the name of the organization is Tehila Business Solution. What we are doing now is we want to be an agreed value chain consultant, where we will kind of like link uh, uh, farmers to the, the uh, processes who buy for them. And then it's also a backward linkage you know, the processes to the farmers. And we are also looking at linking the processes to the retailers and the wholesalers. And so I spent some few days in uh, Toronto here. What I did was that I tried to get to the African market and to ask them what are some of the products they would like. And they talk about the process cassava flour, process yam flour, the plantain, the process one. And then they, they talk about the issue of packaging. They, they talk about the issue of quality. And so we want to concentrate more back home in Ghana. In the... Hello. Philip, if you could turn your video off, that will help your bank. Lose Philip. We lost Philip. He is. I see him to patch in again. He's having some issues on his mobile device. Okay. All right. I see four more hands. Uh, and I, I think James is not able to speak. Faye was not able to speak. Faye, uh, uh, can you try again? Hello. Faye can, uh, yeah, yeah, Faye, yes, we can hear you, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, so Faye, we all have a question so, together. So, so, so Faye, now what I want, I mean, we moved on uh, from the, the personal le uh, level. Uh, yes. Now, I want everyone actually to just think about, so we actually were there together uh, as a group and we discussed uh, some frameworks, we learned about tools uh, and we looked at a lot of practical examples, some challenges, some success stories. Now, the real world is different, right? When you go, uh, you face the reality. Yes. Uh, you face the organization yeah. and some of the challenges that uh, Shazia, uh, Rashida was mentioning too. So when you actually went back, uh, tell, tell us uh, what was easy to apply, what you were able to apply and, 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 and you were seeing some result and what were the challenges, the real challenges that you face and new things that you are discovering uh, as you try to implement some of the ideas. Okay, so when we were at Cody, one of the things that we were made to quickly understand, because I come from an organization that is um, uh, is really an NGO, think tank research and advocacy group, um, one of the learnings that I was able to take away was don't insert yourself into the value chain. And because of mm -hmm. that, I also could understand the fact that we needed to bring the players to the table. So while mm -hmm. we had been approached by one corporate, when I came back, I was able to make us all understand that um, by the time it gets to the real commitment level and rolling up the sleeves, we will probably need more than one champion in the room. And I took that from the, from the Bangladesh milk story, um, case, mm -hmm. uh, case, case study that um, Farouk had shared with us. And so right now we have reached out to three more um, corporate organizations that have indicated interest and we are supposed to be having uh, a follow-up meeting actually this Thursday on the Thursday yes this Thursday on the 19th to be mm -hmm. able to, to uh, identify what their interest will be and be able to align that accordingly another thing that I was able to do by the time we came back it was important to get the operators the cassava flower chain operators into the room really understand what their problems were. So yes, I had done a value chain analysis and from literature and, and research had been able to document what the challenges were, but these were both challenges. And some of the things that came out clearly were that uh, were some challenges that I couldn't have picked off 
research that had been done beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. The solution that we had got was had been introduced at some point in time by some other research came, uh, we had the processors come into the room and they said, guys, if this is the way you wanna go, we're out of here, we're not interested, it doesn't work. It only increases our costs. And the reason why um, the manufacturers do not patronize us is that our costs are higher than for them to actually import this product, this raw material from China, the raw material from China. And uh, part of what increases our cost is this particular thing you're wanting to have us do again. And that mm. became very clear to us that if this is the route we're going, then this thing has failed before it even takes off. And then we got to understand some of the other challenges and difficulties that they were facing in terms of energy, energy needs, in terms of um, seed production, seed multiplication and stuff. And then we began to understand that if we needed to intervene in the value chain, we needed to speak to these issues that directly impact them and not just pick off the shelf from where we think um, research has led us to. And that is where we are at this moment. We are understanding what the processors and the, 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 the producers have as challenges to be able to strengthen that and also ensure that we're not just making them produce, there must be access, there must be linkage, market linkage by getting these um, corporate organizations who use the raw materials to make a commitment to say, whatever happens, we are committed to taking X, Y, Z off of you. So that's where we are. In the okay. Great. Yeah, and, and those are the, the real challenges, right? When you try to implement, it's not... Uh, one actor yes. or, or one organization that can solve all the sort of uh, blockages in the chain or address all the issues exactly. in the in, in the value chain yeah and then we found out that even within the processors they had different issues so what is an issue for a b c might not be an issue for c d e and so we yeah. began to understand that it could be a blanket approach to dealing with the issues on the ground uh-huh uh-huh uh, I also see uh, Queen uh, in the line. Queen, you want to say something uh, on the on the organization side? Yes, um, I posted an amazing chat since her microphone isn't working, where she talked oh. about her organization and her ongoing learning. Uh huh. Okay, uh, Rashida has something to say uh, as well. Rashida? Yeah, I think perhaps one of the um, critical things that I did take away and I've continued to use is um, not trying to look for new solutions to everything. Simply finding solutions that are already out there and then trying to adapt those solutions to some of the issues and challenges that we do have. Because I realize that prior to now, you know, everybody, is, is, when you think about um, solving a problem, the effort had emphasis has always been trying to find a new solution to the problems that are at, at, at hand. And I find that by just simply taking, taking more to the stakeholders, rather than you feeling as um, a service provider that you have all the answers, that they are actually, they understand better what is readily available for them out there. And then if you collaborate more, you can actually use the solutions that are already on ground to kind of, you know, you might not find the perfect um, answers that you have, what is the starting mm -hmm. point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's very important because not not one organization has all the capabilities to solve all the problems in the in, in the value chain. Uh, would anybody else like to say something? Uh, maybe I see Johnny, you are back. Uh, we had lost you briefly. Maybe if you want to share as a as an outsider uh, in the value chain, uh, an organization which is promoting uh, leadership uh, among the youth, and when you see opportunities in in this value chain and you are supporting from outside the value chain, what sort of the challenges do you do you face? Johnny, can you uh, are you still there? Pleasure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. So nice uh, to have you here. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for hosting this. This is very hearing from everybody. Um, well, it's and it's an interesting opportunity for me here. Well, 
else is experiencing. Um, I wanted to uh, 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 respond to, I think it was Diana, I'm not sure who was faced with a challenge of how, how do you how do you implement this in the context of a larger mm -hmm. organization and maybe considering doing something new. I just wanted to take two seconds to sort of say um, yeah, we, we apply our ABCD uh, uh, as well and, and begin to implement mm -hmm. some of these approaches um, where we are and what we share with, with the organization we work with, start where we are in our team and our in our projects. But to your question, um, uh, in, in, in interest here because we have uh, found some opportunities to work with uh, who see after we sort of talked to them about, you know, we've done the value chain training, they saw opportunities um, uh, that's in front of them. And so for us, the biggest challenge is building the ecosystem, building uh, a network of organization along the value chain that can allow them to actually um, uh, take the opportunities. And so one of the things, the most important challenge for them, obviously, is the financing. And so part of the work that we've been doing as an external uh, uh, partner is leveraging our own connection, leveraging mm -hmm. in or supporters in or um, uh, financing institutions um, that can play a role along the value chain, um, and particularly responding to the, the needs that this organization, this particular group of folks have. Um, so it was very helpful uh, that, you know, particularly when you were here, to, to, to go through the process of helping people see that we could not play uh, a role um, mm -hmm. inside the value chain, and we needed to stay outside, and, mm -hmm. and they understand that, and they see the value of that, and they're pushing mm -hmm. us to be, to play that role as an external party. Uh, mm -hmm. As a neutral party, uh, yeah. make decisions to help guide conversations um, and to help bring in partners. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you are breaking up. Uh, that's, that's all I had to. I. I had to. Yeah. yeah. You you just broke up. That's a great point. It's absolutely. No, um, I'll stop I think, here. Yeah, no, it's absolutely because, you know, I mean, uh, depending on the context, uh, we might be talking about uh, a very localized. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Just raise your hand if you hear me. Okay. Yep. Not a problem. Yes, yes. No, that's a great point. Uh, thank you for that uh, contribution, Johnny, because, I mean, depending on the context, um, we might be working on a very localized value chain uh, where there are a limited number of actors and our outreach is low, or we could be working on uh, a value chain that cut, uh, cuts across uh, different geographies and, and goes to international markets. So depending on that, I think uh, um, it's not possible for um, uh, a facilitator who is outside to uh, to to um, uh, do everything or work at all the levels. But uh, as a as an analyst um, or as, as someone who has studied the value chain, you can look at all the different pieces, and then as Johnny was saying that uh, you look at the the whole ecosystem and then see uh, who is the best one to provide. Uh, 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 support to solve a particular uh, problem in the value chain. It's, it, 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 it shouldn't be you. It could be. It could not be you because it's not possible. But if you if you have the right partners in place, then they can actually help in 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 solving a, a particular challenge. So that's a very good point. Uh, I see Joshua is trying to say something. Let's try Joshua now.
Joshua? Uh, that might be for when you ask people to raise their hands. So if you do have your hand raised and your microphone is not working, please type your response in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes. Who is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen. I am back. Who's, who, who's that? Queen, Queen, Queen. Uh, hi, Queen. Yes. Yes, yes. I've been trying to connect. Yeah, the uh, at the no level, uh, a whole lot has transformed beyond learning. They, uh, in fact, we have uh, changed our way of uh, thinking again, and uh, we are no more. Uh, preaching advocacy more. We are mm -hmm. now more into action. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, exposition we, we, we I had in, uh, in uh, at Cody uh, mm -hmm. has gone a very long way in changing our perspective, the way we look at our sector from a different uh, 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 area, from a different flow. We are now laying more impact on how to do and to connect the private sector to the rural community. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, are, we are more committed now to advise punch stages and uh, unlock blockages, to strengthen businesses and uh, 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 for multinational companies, private organizations, and of course, our local government, you know, that will transform, translate mm -hmm. to a village, a local development. You know, we are ready, we are already working this way to help in filling the gap by identifying how to explore partnerships for mm -hmm. community development, bearing in mind the urgent need to move from corporate uh, globalization to uh, global uh, cooperation. It is, mm -hmm. You see, our major challenge is to systemize our operation, you know, so, so as to pay a closer uh, 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 attention to, to the innovation, such as uh, sustainability of regular power supply to our community yeah. for increased access to the market system. You see, uh, the, 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 uh, our experience has shown that the world poor, especially across the countries of Africa, yeah. uh, Nigeria inclusive, uh, are yeah. more on the path, you know, in their millions, yeah. migrating from the path to the city yeah. in search of a uh, uh, broader marketplace and uh, yeah. better choice to make a living. And at the end of the group, women most are shut out of global economic mainstream. So we are actually investing the opportunity based on the knowledge gain and are studying mm -hmm. as good uh, livelihood to yeah. uh, help them access their cultural input. You know, mm -hmm. uh, because for now these inputs are not yet available to farmers in Nigeria. They mm -hmm. don't even get what they need, such as product, service and information. It is really yeah. bad. It's that bad. So having received this uh, scholarship to unlock the way forward uh, towards uh, building uh, something that does not exist at all, that is uh, uh, having sharpened our innovative uh, strength, we are trying to uh, push business down to the people to 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 uh, to develop uh, the social, the special economic tool. That uh, is, uh, my experience actually has helped my session uh, in the local context to show that. There is an urgent need to connect producers to market. You know, as we speak, discussions are ongoing between me and the multinational uh, seed company. Introduced to me through Philip, I mean, uh, through uh, Innocent, Innocent okay. from uh, uh, Malawi. You know, it wow. was a wonderful thing, really. And uh, based on that, the business capacity to sell their product and increase their access in Nigeria market while being conscious of the participatory rule of development. You see, the, the code actually connects. The, the, the objective of this pro project is to increase farmers' access to input and credit, especially for people, and encourage a good market system in my country, Nigeria, that will go a very long way in addressing existing problems, such as poor quality and the substandard products and the poor market access. You see, this will go a, a very long way to enhance movement of population from the base of the pyramid to uh, improve progressive uh, pro progression out of a poverty index in Nigeria. Uh, uh, okay. Once more, I must confess that Cody truly connects. Okay. 
Thank you, thank you, Queen. You are breaking up a little bit, but that uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, we have received uh, uh, a message from uh, Shazia. Let me quickly read out because she, Shazia is from Pakistan. She was in the last class. She works with the government, uh, and she's saying that for me, uh, working in government organization where we have various levels scattered to report, different generation in the same workplace. It's inevitable that we will uh, have people of different generation on staff, especially senior management has their own mindset and adaptability for new learning. And when uh, new ideas, programs, concepts come from juniors, subordinate level officers, their challenges arise for officers like us to convince the senior management uh, with logical reasoning uh, and rationale behind the new ideas and programs. So that's a real challenge. I faced uh, challenges when uh, I have submitted new project proposals for SMEs using new learning uh, and techniques uh, from the course. It's always hard to work in such environment but didn't give up uh, and after making two attempts finally senior management accepted the project. So that's great. Uh, that's the real application. This is what we want to see, uh, uh, to see Shazia. Uh, that's great, and I think your story uh, reminds me what uh, Rashida was saying that okay, it's it's difficult for for her to convince uh, within her uh, uh, organization as well. Uh, so at this point in time, you know, I would like to bring one graduate, and I'm I'm uh, so happy that he is here today. So he attended the course in uh, 2015 or 16. He was in the United Nations. Uh, so, uh, and he's from Chad, Carmel. So, Carmel, can you quickly share your story of you uh, coming to Cody, uh, working in the UN, and then you went back, you did your value chain analysis, and faced the same challenges as, as uh, others are facing, and then you decided to go in the value chain, uh, not as UN, but uh, as an entrepreneur. So, can you share your story quickly, and that actually has all the three elements of personal, uh, organizational, and changes at the community level. So, uh, Carmel, if you are there, just quickly. Okay, I think we might have lost Carmel. I Carmel, are you there? Can, can you raise your hand, Carmel? I see him in the system. I'm hoping is able to connect because we were talking to him earlier yeah so anyway I mean I, I told his story a little bit uh, I wish he was there but essentially what he did uh, he, he went back and he still he's still in the UN uh, he's still posted in, in Chad uh, working with refugees and, and, and others but he started a processing uh, unit um, for corn uh, and uh, as as Rashida was saying, it was not any any new sort of technology. Anything it was something existing uh, in other areas, but nobody else was able to bring that uh, in 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 that local economy where he was working. So he and he kept waiting for uh, the government uh, support from the UN, this and that, and he got frustrated for like year and a half, and then says, "Forget about it. I'm going to invest my own capital." He had two other friends. And, and he started and he's actually in the value chain uh, uh, um, solving a, 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 like a blockage in the value chain or a barrier in the value chain by providing this uh, the, the access to local producers so that they can process their corn. So, uh, so we have had examples like that, uh, that as well. Uh, <coughs> okay, uh, I see hand of Joshua. Yeah, hello. Yeah, Joshua, finally. Okay. Yeah, hello. Okay, yeah, you guys. Thank you. How are you doing? Very good. Okay. Um, thank you, you guys. The experience at um, Cody um, um, has given me a lot of things to think about. I appreciate the time spent there with you. And... Um, um, other participants. Um, so when I got back, I my organization is a microfinance institution. Am I still on, Yogesh? Yes, yeah, you are on, yeah. Okay. My organization is a microfinance institution in the rural area. 
So I got back to work and um, uh, with the, I decided to work with the farmers in my uh, rural area, my community, especially those in livestock. And I remember, and I, and I know you can remember my, my assignment, the catfish assignment, Yes, so I do I, remember, yes. I have to bring, yeah, so I have to bring, um, I said I was going to bring the farmers together in the community. And yeah. what do we want to do? Our action points is we'll be working on training the farmers on um, the improved and efficient ways of farming with um, focus on catfish production and poultry. So uh, as at now, we have um, established a relationship with um, the agri institutions around us, both private and government owned, to um, send some of their um, people, some of their professors there, to come discuss with these farmers. The mm -hmm. essence is we want them to, uh, to know the improved ways, efficient ways of farming, we also look at the at the value chain and um, see analyze the value chain and extract some of the challenges because we cannot be in in the chain we hope to um, improve the activity from you know outside the chain so mm -hmm. this meeting is later for september to bring the mm -hmm. farmers around with the trade open uh, farmers in catfish production in poultry they will come and um, after they've learned on the improved ways of farming then we'll look at the value chain, analyze it, bring out some of the challenges. And some of these challenges, it's now, it now rests on us to see how we can um, link them up with those who can provide um, these services and who can take care of, of these challenges to design the various um, intervention projects. So that's what we are working on. It's still in the, in, in the pipeline. Hopefully by September, this meeting will kick off and um, subsequent intervention and processes will take place thereafter. Thank you, Yogesh. That's perfect. Thank you. Wow, again, this is the kind of changes we, this is the real impact uh, for us at Cody, the changes at the, and the impact at the community level. Okay, I see more hands. Uh, are, you, are you tracking that, Wendy? Uh, Yes, I am. We're going to try one more time with Ch Chazia because we've been working on the offside of seeing if we can get that microphone working. Yeah. And Jacinta as well. Chazis from Pakistan. We're going to try one more time on that mobile device. No. No. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All okay. right. So I think we yeah. had uh, yeah. we have had uh, like uh, like like good sharing among 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 the the ones who are here. Uh, uh, this one thing I, I really want to uh, emphasize on now, uh, and which is the the next uh, slide is this. So first of all. Uh, you 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 came to Cody. You went back. You learned something. Uh, you're trying to change things uh, at the organization level. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's uh, easy. Sometimes it's frustrating. You have to keep trying. Some of you are thinking of starting your own enterprises because you think the the system is is so constrained. So there are different sort of uh, pathways you have gone uh, on after the after the Cody uh, Cody course, and which is quite understandable. Now, in your own journeys, uh, as you as you implement the new ideas, as, as you take on new challenges, do you think you do you need uh, more help uh, on an ongoing basis? If you do need help, please raise your hand. A lot of people do need help on an ongoing basis. Now, if you were to look at now, so your, your Cody course has, has ended, right? And uh, you have gone back home. And, and uh, for this particular class, I think uh, this was the first time uh, you reconnected uh, in form of a webinar. 
I know uh, we do speak in uh, in separate uh, groups uh, of our class. Uh, we have WhatsApp and, and email groups, and we do chat there. But as as the bigger uh, livelihoods and markets group, this is the first time uh, you have had the engagement with Cody. So and and this is just one way of uh, connecting. But can you, uh, from your experience, what sort of uh, support you think would be most useful for you? on an ongoing basis from Kodi and uh, from one another. So what are the modalities you think of, uh, of having this, uh, this ongoing learning uh, on, on, on a continuous basis? So I see uh, Shazia and she's not able to connect. Surendra? Surendra, uh, can you speak? Hello. Hello. Yes, Surendra, yeah. Yeah, so one thing is that uh, the social enterprise and this value chain is very, very, you know, crucial for our development uh, work, especially with the farming community around the commodities. And we feel that in day-to-day -day con context and, you know, in geographical context, uh, as we, if you remember, <clears throat> some uh, one year back, I have said the market is cruel. So market is very dynamic, and you know we need to also <clears throat> have evolve uh, a model which is uh, you know pro community uh, kind of a thing. So uh, though I mean uh, I mean value chain is more there is no value, there is no value chain leader in the system, right? So yeah. so farmers are so farmers are producing and. Uh, some middlemen are there and then banks are financing and all the projects are working in a different uh, you know different level and processors are there in between so there is no value chain uh, leader so governing this value chain in an effective manner is a big challenge so that so one thing is that you know uh, some kind of a it localized and uh, commodity specific uh, improvement in value chains as a part of uh, questions if comes fr from us through uh, this process or any other process it would really helpful and second thing is this dynamism the whole uh, the, you know in the farmers crisis in india like for example where uh, you know there is a huge dynamic changes like every day commodity prices are falling five percent ten percent other day they are increasing it's a whole global environment is there so how to uh, you know uh, how to uh, safeguard the interest of the, the the community in the whole value chain that's a very important thing and we need some kind of a guidance uh, through your experience and from the the, the uh, other panelists and other uh, participants so these are the two things i am looking for yeah and and those two are very important sort of uh, areas for further exchange but do you have any thoughts like what's the best way of engaging? So is it one-to-one uh, -one support from uh, or, or more, more of a mentoring from Cody facilitator to you? Or is it uh, more of uh, webinars like this? Or is it uh, more of a regional uh, sort of uh, collection of Cody graduates where they interact with each other? or it could be a thematic uh, sort of collection of st uh, of uh, Cody graduates. So what's the best way sort of uh, to, to uh, because those are very important uh, uh, sort of topics to keep learning about. So what, what are sort of the different ways of uh, connecting? So to start with, to start with, we can start with question, uh, question sending to you uh, or across the board. So that's the way to start and you know once once uh, there is enough, uh, you know, enough data is available uh, to answer those questions or to actually going into the, the you know, the modifications of uh, this thing and suggestions, so then, uh, you know, secondary or tertiary measures uh, could be taken up in the future. But to start with, I think, I mean, obviously, I mean, uh, if uh, there is a geographical present, uh, you know, uh, presence is there, it would be a very, very added advantage. But I'm saying to start with. Uh, so, for example, if what I am facing the problem or issues or challenges, if I can come across, if I can, uh, you know, send across to you or the board. So, yeah. so let's start with this, and then yeah. after the interaction, let's find out what is the best way how we can, uh, you know, organize uh, the, the, the these sessions and uh, this 
this uh, issues effective manner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this kind of a, a webinar if we sort of uh, uh, if we are able to sort out the technological sort of glitches and all you think this kind of interaction would be helpful in actually uh, you as a professional i'm not just asking surendra everybody you as a professional to just uh, once in a while maybe once in a month or once in two months and and once we narrow down on on few topics you think this kind absolutely. of interaction will help you in terms of reflection and 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 learning absolutely absolutely this is the first time so uh, maybe we are next time we are very specific and organized in our uh, questions and uh, yeah. the issues and yeah. obviously then uh, uh, the, 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 this could be very useful uh, to start with mm -hmm. okay uh, others want to comment uh, i see shazia again but she's not able to connect yeah Shaz shazia is saying uh, it can be in form in the form sharing knowledge tool frameworks on certain topic subjects like we are more into promotion of entrepreneurship of producers artisans working in the farm non farm sector i would appreciate the continuous uh, mentoring support from kodi facilitators secondly we can also exchange it on whatsapp group okay webinar is also very helpful all right are there any other uh, suggestions yes uh, queen Oh, and, uh, Maybe Surendra, you can turn off your uh, video. Yeah. Hello. Queen. Hi. You guys can you hear me? Queen, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh. Yeah. It's ongoing learning in the uh the uh, uh modality. In fact, doing good. You no, know, it's doing well. And um. Having learned to be an alternative as close as I am, I uh, uh, I am towards facilitating micro uh, uh, franchising uh, uh, to upgrade a distribution of products and services to the grassroots to support the value chain and adding value to products to increase their shelf life. And this process, you know, shall be better a broader marketplace and advanced private sector. Uh, engagement that will foster the uh, the principle of uh, replicability. So what I actually need, the help I need from Cody is to help in broadening this market by, if possible, helping us in Nigeria to broaden our market, our international uh, inter international uh, market linkages, you know, and uh, if possible, also to to provide us with more material, possibly through online or uh, through online, yeah. Uh, that will help us more to uh, uh, research and know uh, various uh, other potential uh, areas that we can delve into that will help mm -hmm. us in uh, uh, that can efficiently and effectively address this challenge of poor market system in Nigeria. You know, Africa mm -hmm. is uh, really poor in that, although it's a potential uh, country anyway, and uh, th this will integrate some kind of livelihood in our, our various communities. So they, they support if uh, Cody can help in funding us with more resource, more material, more resource where we can learn more from. It will uh, it will help us in the in the, the portion. Okay. Uh, Hello. Yeah. yeah. Is is there a comment? Uh, uh, Wendy, is, uh, are there comments in the section? Yes, uh, Beatrice has uh, made a comment about, um, also Shazi also said, it can be in the form of knowledge tool frameworks on certain topics and subjects, like we're more into promotion of entrepreneurship and of producers and artisans, subject matter experts in the firm and non-firm sector. I would appreciate the continuous support from our Cody people facilitators. Secondly, we also can exchange on our WhatsApp group. This webinar mm -hmm. was also helpful for sharing the reflections. Mm -hmm. And uh, Beatrice also made a comment of a, a descriptor of uh, how South African clients path linking firm smallholder firm markets really stands lag issue regarding the sensitivity around the recent talks. 
with such advancement in the agri supply chain systems, there is certainly the need to modify hold or operation find a point of inception to the agri-food supply chain or create alternative markets for small farmers. A group of us will be embarking on a study from September as a basis for forming national policy on use to create pathways for small farmers to enter into the agri-food supply chain. I believe the livelihood and markets course has definitely shaped how I perceive value chain analysis and will go a long way towards influencing my recommendations. Great. I think something like this would be good to share uh, through a webinar. So Beatrice, if, if you keep me posted, maybe we can um, we can ha have a webinar to uh, so that you can present but also get feedback from, from others um, because uh, what you are dealing there in South Africa, you may think that uh, uh, from the context point of view it's a very unique challenge but there might be others uh, who are facing the same challenge who would benefit, uh, um, who would benefit uh, from your approach, the way you did the analysis, uh, the way you identified the issues it might be useful for uh, others as well. So I think that's that's uh, that's the next step in terms of identifying these key uh, topics uh, and and then uh, reconnecting uh, maybe through a webinar. And I think one way to keep the discussion going uh, and and identify these topics is uh, Cody Connects. And uh, I will um, let uh, Wendy. Uh, speak to you a little bit about uh, Cody Connects uh, and, and the exact place where we can share some of these ideas and narrow down on a topic uh, and, and then we can have uh, more webinars uh, along the way and hopefully uh, we can sort out some of the technological things, there, there are learnings from this as well uh, and then hopefully we can keep this, uh, this mode of communication where we can, um, we can have a space where we can share uh, exactly the way we used to do in the classroom but on an ongoing basis with more real knowledge from the field and then share and, and keep the, the learning going. So it was really wonderful to see many of you after uh, a long time and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to more, uh, more of such interactions. Uh, thank you very much and I'll hand it over to Wendy to tell you about Cody Connects and uh, there is a survey that she wants to do after this. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Yogi, for, uh, for volunteering to bring everybody together for such a valuable webinar. Today, you know, we've learned a lot about what you've been doing since you um, left our campus, whether that be in Ganesh or whether it be overseas in your own communities. Um, for us here at the Cody, we're really, really interested in making sure that we can continue that learning and that's we have Cody Connect uh, as our um, as our online learning platform you search Cody Connects um, dot sfx dot ca you will find that you can log in um, if you have difficulty um, logging in or if you have lost your password or it has expired or you know if you're getting the messages email us at Cody Connects and uh, Cody Connect at s. Dot, find the email link above you into our grad network. You'll notice that once you log in, all of Cody graduates have been asked as they have asked to be joined. It is uh, we have over 3,500 graduates in right now, and there's specifically a livelihood markets node for you folks to continue your very specific conversation. So. We would love to invite any graduate to have uh, to contact us if you'd like to do a webinar, if you'd like to do a, a focused discussion in Cody Connect. Um, it's, it's designed for you, so we need you to do uh, to do this ongoing learning. Uh, there's so much happening in your WhatsApp uh, that I think even folks not part of that group would be able to learn from. So uh, one of the I'm going to get you to. Uh, I'm going to also get you to do uh, before you uh, leave and, and continue with your day, with your evening, is to also uh, take about 
two minutes to provide some feedback on the webinar. Um, you'll know there's a chat, um, there's a hyperlink in the chat now. <coughs> we'll take you out anonymous search where we're just trying to keep track of you know what's working, some suggestions, other than the darn technology of getting phones to work, but you know, so the things that will iron out over time as well. So um, those of you who joined us, our webinars are recorded. If you're able to attend the full session, you notice that probably the next day there is a, a link listed. The courses are posted in the webinar in the graduates mode of Cody Camps. And recording our recording session are also put up on YouTube. So you have the the audio version of that. The recordings themselves uh, also capture the chat feature in our Cody Connects. So without any further ado, I'd like to thank you for the time that you have spent with us this uh, this morning, this evening, afternoon, where and I will def uh, definitely uh, look forward to hearing from you of the web you would like to host. I am your contact to help you technology and help you navigate the system to learn how to do a webinar as well. As yeah, we're definitely going to figure out the microphone. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you so much, folks.